stomach. I take five dried grams. I weigh 145 pounds. If you weigh more, take more. If you take weigh less, take less. I roll, I, I take the mushrooms and in, then I sit. Even though, for me, they never come on faster than an hour. I sit that whole hour. And I usually smoke a bomber. And I usually roll up three more. <laughs> and then I have them laying in front of me. And then at about the hour and 20 minute mark, well, there are, in the first hour there are certain presentational symptoms, but they're trivial. Your nose runs. The psilocybin is causing that. That's real. That's a symptom. Uh, your nose runs. Sometimes you have to go to the bathroom. Get all this taken care of in the first 45 minutes. Then sit there. Then for me, at about the hour and 20 minute mark, give or take, not more than five minutes, it begins what's called streaming. Streaming is when you close your eyes and there are after image colored globs of stuff floating by, either colored mauve or chartreuse. It's pretty trivial. And, but you just watch. And part of what you have to train people to do is it's weird. People don't know how to look at the back of their own eyelids. People don't know how to look at darkness. And so what I say is close your eyes, sit in darkness, and watch the back of your eyelids with the simple expectation that you might see something. You know, close your eyes and look. Well, then the streaming gives way to the, the first wave, which is usually pretty steep. I mean, I've had trips where I could see it coming toward me, you know, and it was 100 miles wide and 10 miles high, and it's just like a tidal wave, and you say, oh my God, you know, what have we done here? <laughs> Raise this thing up, and it's just roaring toward you, and there's nothing you can do then. Except I just say to it, you know, I'm yours. Please don't hurt me. Please, for Christ's sake, don't hurt me. And uh, it, 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 it's like watching a thermonuclear explosion through about 30 feet of crystal clear glass. I mean, when I do it in California, I have the feeling that when the thing hits, Everybody from Vancouver to Tijuana must have just had to crawl under their desk because the idea that this is in your mind is inconceivable. I mean, it hits with the force of an asteroid impact or something like that. And, and then, you know, have you ever seen these things where when they set off an atom bomb, 500 meters from ground zero, they set up cameras and then a thousand meters, and then 1,500 meters. And as the explosion takes place, the first set of cameras gets a second and a half, and then they're vaporized, and the switches move back 500 meters to the next set of cameras. You get uh, three seconds of film, and then those cameras are vaporized. Well, that's what it's like. It just keeps uh, exploding the perceptor, and finally, you know, in a sense, you lose consciousness because you, you, you can't say what goes on. It's just so extraordinarily boundary dissolving that there's no there there, and there's no you there to tell you about it. And then you begin to drift down through the layers, and it presents itself. And it can present itself all kinds of different ways. I, I remember one trip I had, I think it was this same trip, the 100 miles wide, 10 miles high thing, this wave came at me, and I barely had time to lay down. And after a long, long time, I became aware that there was a woman standing over me in some kind of tight-fitting suit, some kind of sexy outfit, and, uh, and I heard a voice. And it said, uh, they say it helps to close your eyes, cowboy. <laughs> and so I closed my eyes. And, uh, and, and, and it was just...
just you know, it was just raging. And then after about 30 seconds, I opened my eyes, and this woman who had her, who was standing over me with my body between her legs put her face right down next to mine and said, "Is it strong enough for you, asshole?" <laughs> so many different ways uh, and, and then the conversations take place and they can be anything I mean I remember one trip where you know something's happening and then click and I'm looking at a map and over here is uh, the west the east coast New England Florida so forth and over here is Europe and England and so I'm looking at this map, and then I see a little ship setting off from France, like a little cartoon ship. And the voice says in my head, each ship represents 10,000 settlers. And so I see this ship go across, and it lands in New England. And then I see one leave from England, and it lands in Georgia. And then I see little villages growing, and it says, each village represents a community of 100,000 people. Well, what is this? It's an animated movie about the colonization of North America. Great, thank you. I have no idea what this is for. The other thing you can do with mushrooms, which is, which is really fun, is you can say to it, uh, be, MDMA, and it will just drop its outer space garb and, and, and all that, and it will be MDMA. You can say to it, be LSD, and it will be LSD. And then, as I said, the scariest thing to say to it is, show me what you really are for yourself. And at that point, it, it just it just begins to come apart, and you can't stand it. After 40 seconds of that, you say, I'm sorry I even asked, <laughs> you know, reassure me. And because you have the sense, you know, my God, this thing is what it seems to be. It's a galactic intelligence. It's a billion years old. It's touched 10 million worlds. It knows the history of 150,000 civilizations. It's beyond your possibility of conceiving and how, why it is communicating with an, an organic atom like yourself is not entirely clear. Its essence cannot be, cannot be assimilated. It guards you from it. It protects you. And one thing I've always noticed about mushrooms is how incredibly kind it is to beginners. You know, people almost never have bad trips early on in their involvement with it. It's once you trust it and it trusts you, then it says, you know, how far do you want to go? How far do you want to go? And this is a real, here on a place like Maui, where there's a lot of spiritual disciplining going on and a lot of stress on conscious growth, it's worth talking about this. I have the impression from psilocybin that if you truly want to be the monk on cold mountain, this is the way to do it. You can do it. With all these other spiritual disciplines, yoga, diet, mantrayana, uh, the whole bit, everybody drives with the accelerator slammed to the floor. That's the only way to make progress in those disciplines, is work at it like a dog, and maybe you'll get somewhere. Once you come to psychedelics, you get a lot of interest in locating the brake pedal. The brake pedal becomes central to the enterprise. It's no more about how can I move faster toward my spiritual goals. It's all about how can I prolong this so that it lasts a lifetime before I become incomprehensible to everybody who knows me. And if you wish that, if you truly feel drawn to sagehood, 
then all you have to do is take mushrooms a lot. You know, I take them uh, every few months. Some people take them every few weeks. Take it three times in a week at the five gram dose and you will have to make decisions about what you want to do with your life because I've noticed when I take it in the Amazon, the, the perception that you really have to discipline yourself to resist is the mushroom says, you know, go into the forest, take off your clothes, you don't, you can survive in the forest, you don't need civilization. And I don't know whether it's true or not. I mean, there are horrible, horrible stories of people who were found raving mad five days later, driven so by the bite of insects. But on the other hand, you know, the jungle is where we came out of, and you do have the feeling that you really want to go back to the canopy, that you really want to be in the canopy, eating fruit and picking fleas off your mate, and uh, enjoying the sunshine, yeah.